everybody, this is Tech Guy. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is going over the app launcher application for Android. What it is is a premium launcher that adds some pretty cool features and makes everything much cleaner and simpler. As you can see, that is the app drawer. The app drawer button is no longer in the center or wherever you place it on the dock. It is right there with a quick swipe, and you get all your applications from the home screen. Oops. So just a quick swipe and all your applications are right there. You can use this over here to go through alphabetically or you can scroll through all of them. And your widgets are right here so you can see all the available widgets that you can use just by going to that tab. And then up here we have the action bar. So the first thing is this button right here which will take you to your app drawer on the side. Tap that and tap it again to make it go away. Now this is one of my favorite things about this launcher is this little search thing. What it does is you can search anything in Google. You can set in the settings where it searches to either Google on the internet or whatever. But what you can also do is search on your phone. So let's just say I wanted to find the, um, let's say Doodle Jump. I would just look up do. And as you can see right there, Doodle Jump is one of the first things, or I can search in Google. So if I wanted to search Doodle Jump in Google and not on my phone, I could type that, and as you can see, the application is right there. I can easily get to it that way. Or I can hit that, which will take me to Google now, and it will give me um, either Google search results right there, or I can search on my phone for things there. Going back, the last thing on here is the Play Store link, which is just a simple link to the Play Store. My favorite feature of this launcher is the covers. So these down here on my dock are covers. Now what it is is they're a folder so if I hit my music application for example it will open up my music application. But in reality this is a folder and the main application is covering the folder so if I flick up with it it will open the folder. So I'm actually going to show you how to create a cover. Well first we're going to create a folder on my main screen I have my social applications so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put all of these into a folder let's move this right here and I'm going to open it up I'm going to call it social just as an example social and here are my social applications now the application that is in the very front or right here is going to be your cover so let's say I wanted Twitter to be my cover. Actually, let's just leave Instagram as my cover. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this little setting button on the corner and make cover. And as you can see, it says social, and there's a little square thing right there. And if I'm to flick up, it will show all of the applications. And if I'm to tap on it, it will just open up the main application there. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of the settings. So if I go into the menu and tap on settings, we're going to be brought into the settings menu. And first we have display. So opening that up, we have a few options. We have icon pack, screen margins, which I'm actually going to go over these one by one. The first thing is icon pack. And currently I'm using the Stark icon pack. You can also do none and you can pick the jelly bean stock icon pack. So I have stock stark currently you can use whatever you want to do you could download different ones that's why my icons look different and awesome i recommend the stark icon pack it's like 140 or something like that in the play store next we have screen margins so i have everything set in the middle you can move that around and experiment with that as you please if you first download it and things seem a little off centered you can just come in here and mess with that and everything could get back to normal then wallpaper scrolling, so if you have more than one home screen and you scroll to the side, it will basically run with your uh, wallpaper. And then we have the invisible action bar, so if I were to check that, my action bar that was up here would be transparent. By default, that is checked. And then we have display edge shadow, so uh, that will put a shadow on the top and bottom of the screen. Basically makes it look a little cooler. And the tabs, which is the, when you go to your app drawer, it says widgets and applications at the top. Uh, I recommend keeping it as default, but you can completely hide that, or you can make it thin, so it just shows that you're on what tab. And now we have the background for the quick drawer, so I have it as holo dark. 
You can put it as tinted or black. Experiment with that as you please. Next, we have home screen page count, so I only have one, and the default screen is one. You can put as much as you want. Grid dimensions is how many icons by how many icons or the size of widgets that you can put onto your screen. Currently, I have it set to 4x4. Once again, you can set that as whatever you want. Show text labels, that just shows the uh, icon text, so if you put Facebook on your thing, it will display the Facebook text on the bottom. And then we have dock, you can enable or disable that, set the width, put a separator, and put a page indicator. So that is all the display settings, and then we have hidden apps, which you can just go through when it loads them all up, and check any apps that you want to be hidden, so I don't have that many checked, but I do have some like mobile ID, which is a virgin mobile thing, playbooks, play magazine, and play mus movies and TV, I never use those, so I check those and you can set more if you would like to. And then we have shortcuts, so that brings up more options, so you can open or cover your shutter, so that is a vertical swipe, I'll get into that in a little bit. And then we have the action bar search, so you can set it to quick search, you can set it to a direct Google search or a voice search, so quick search will make it so it displays your applications and stuff. And you can toggle your quick drawer with the home button if you want to, so if you hit it again, it will go back and forth in between that. You can toggle your action bar by touching any space on the, any empty space on the home screen. And you can get notifications, so swipe down from anywhere to open. So that is that. Now, let's, well, there's import, so if you open that, it will bring up your other launchers, and you can import your canvases or icon setups from other launchers. So I'm going to cancel that go back into my settings and then go into lab so this is first we have auto memory cache you can read those and set whatever you want uh, landscape mode but what I'm going to be going over next is shutters so I'm going to check that and go over that right now so now we're going to go over the shutters it basically opens a widget for well the main widget for the application uh, with a simple swipe. So as you can see, Facebook and Twitter right there have the three lines right there indicating that there is a shutter available. I'm going to show you an example of a shutter by going to the Chrome and doing a quick swipe up. And that will open up the Chrome widget within the home screen. So you can have the widgets there and everything works very smoothly. I personally do not use that, but you can use that how you please. I'll show you another example with, um, let's say, dictionary swipe up and I can search dictionary words very very quickly with the widget there. So my final thoughts of this is it is a fantastic launcher and I would recommend it. There are some things, well for the price it's $3.99 in the App Store. For the price I honestly do not think it is worth it but I will be using it as my main launcher for now on and I'm hoping that he comes out with the features to make it worth it such as setting um custom shortcuts for like if I hit the home for it to go somewhere or custom swipes or just some new features that will make this new features that other launchers have that if this one had this would be the best launcher so like custom transitions in between screens and all these things that he could add to make this completely worth it and this has the potential to be one of well it is one of the best but the best launcher out there so, more features are needed, but overall this is a fantastic launcher, and I would recommend it to anybody. The price is a bit high, but if you do pay it, you will find yourself using some of the features, and um, almost be worth it to you. It will depend case by case. There will be a link in the description. Please comment, rate, and subscribe if you like this video. Have a fantastic day, and goodbye.